Hey, welcome back everybody. This is Ian and in this quick video, I'm going to show you how you can quickly create this hover effect inside of your web projects. So a member of the discord community posted a screenshot of a feature that was similar to this and they were asking the best way to achieve this effect. So I quickly threw something together and now I felt like it might be a good idea just to walk everyone through the code since this is a really common thing that you'll run into. So let's just look at the functionality here. We have a really simple horizontal navigation menu, very common for most websites or even mobile apps. And you'll notice that the page that we're currently on, the home page, is active. Okay, so it appears differently than the other links. And if we hover over a different link, we get that similar effect. And when we move away from it, then that effect disappears. So that's what we're going to explore creation of. And also we're going to talk just a little bit about accessibility because it's important uh, you can use the tab key. Just imagine that, you know, you don't have a mouse or something like that. And you'll notice that we actually changed the CSS to make it very specific about what it is we're looking at. So in addition to the traditional focus animation or not animation, but the traditional focus effect that comes with your browser, we've kind of beefed it up a little bit and added this larger solid blue outline and so that helps the user know what it is they're looking at before they click on it so let's take a look at the source code this is going to be quick because it's not a lot of source code but we are dealing with a nav bar or a navigation menu and so we put it inside of the correct semantic element and that is going to be nav so inside of nav we have a ul an unordered list very common for creating menus you don't have to do it that way, but it is uh, traditionally done that way. And then inside the list, we have list items. So you can see each of these list items and nested inside of it is an anchor tag. The anchor tag here, just for the purpose of this demonstration, has its href attribute set to a hash, meaning if you click on these, you're actually not going to go anywhere. And then the very first one has that class set to active, and that's what gives it this blue text color and then that kind of underline effect, just indicating that this would be the home page that we're currently on. All right, so the CSS is where the magic happens here. We have a couple of different selectors. We have the UL selector. We have the LI with all of the anchor tags inside of it. And then we have the LI with the anchor tags inside of it for their hover state, their focus state. And additionally, we're applying the same set of properties here to the active class selector, so dot .active. And then the last thing here is optional, but just to kind of beef up the built-in focus for our anchor tags within a list item, we've selected that again here and added some additional styling. And that's specifically for increasing the visibility of the focus indicator. You don't have to do that. The focus indicator will already give it kind of a, a grayish outline, but if you really want it to pop and be obvious, okay, that's what you're focusing on, then you can add some additional stuff. So let's go back to the top here. The first thing we do with this unordered list is we use list style type and we set it to none. And so traditionally an unordered list, if you think of like a word document or an HTML file without any sort of uh, CSS styling is going to be a bulleted list. And so the bullets are the style type, the default style type for an unordered list. So we want to get rid of that. So we use the list style type of none. Now you may not know it, but the, I believe the list items where they have a default margin or maybe the unordered list itself has a margin. So we go ahead and zero that out so that everything goes over to the wall. Likewise, we want to zero out the padding in case there's any built-in padding coming from the browser. So the browser, all different browsers will have their own kind of base style sheet that they style all of the default HTML elements with. So we just want to make sure that we remove any of that beforehand. And a lot of times you can do that with like a normalization CSS style sheet that you include before your custom styles. But in this case, we don't have that. So the other thing we're using here is display of flex. And that's what gives us this nice horizontal layout. Traditionally, the unordered list is going to be in a column vertically. So when we set the display to flex, this is actually going to automatically put it into a horizontal row. And the flex direction will, will by default be in a row as opposed to a column. So that's a nice little built-in feature of Flexbox, just being able to change the display to flex. Okay, so then going down to the LIA here, meaning all anchor tags that live inside of a list item. So that would be all these anchor tags here inside of this unordered list. 
We're going to change the display to block. Anchor tags by default are in line. They can't be styled like a block. So in order for us to be able to add something like padding to an anchor tag, we have to change the display to block so that it can accept those block level styling attributes like padding. So then the font family for the anchor tags by default is just whatever the browser gives it some type of serif font, maybe like Times New Roman or something, I don't know. So we want it to be a sans serif font. So we'll start with Helvetica. And if the user's browser can't identify that on their computer, then we go to Arial. And if that's not available, then we'll just go with whatever the default sans serif font, meaning there's no little curlies on the ends of each of the characters. And it's a font that looks like what we have here. So those are our fallbacks for Helvetica. The color here, 353535, is just a hex number for a dark gray color. You could use RGB. You could use the name of the color if you wanted. I just went with something that is going to have a good contrast against the background, which is beneficial for accessibility purposes. So the user can actually see and read the text easily. So then we talked about the padding. We just throw some padding around the text here so that there's some good separation of these elements. And then the text decoration here is none. And so for an anchor tag, the default text decoration is going to be underlined so that you know that that is a link. That's the whole purpose of a anchor tag is that you can click on it and it can take you somewhere else on the same page by way of a fragment or to a different page or different website out there on the World Wide Web. And so the indicator for that is the underline. We remove that because you should know just by looking at this menu that this is a menu. We do have the active underline here that we've created with, as you'll see in a moment, the border bottom attribute. So we're going to remove the default underline and just set it to none via that text decoration property. So then going down, we have our list item anchor tags in a hover state. So we're using the pseudo selector here, colon hover on the anchor tag that lives inside of a list item. And we're saying when it's being hovered over, the color will change to blue and the border bottom will be two pixels solid blue. So that is the magic right there that when we hover over any of these list items, then you'll notice that the text color changes to blue and we get that border bottom of two pixels solid blue. In addition to that, we also set that for the focus. So again, the default focus of a anchor tag is going to be whatever the browser sets it to, but we want it to really pop. So we added this color blue with the border bottom two pixel solid blue. Likewise, we want to indicate to the user which of the pages they're currently on by having that hover state also be the default state for the page that we're on. So we can tell that we're on the home page because it's blue and it's underlined. And if we were to click on about, in a scenario where this is actually hooked up to a real web application, then we would hope that the about page would also look like the home page, indicating to us that we are on the about page versus one of the other pages. The only other indicator would be the content of the page and then, of course, the URL up top. But this helps indicate to whoever is viewing the web page which page they're on. So that's why we have the active class there as well. Like I spoke about earlier, in addition to the default focus styling for an anchor tag, we can augment that to make it really pop and be a little bit more accessible. And so if someone's using like the tab key, for instance, you'll notice as they tab through these items here and it focuses on each of the items, in addition to the blue text and the border bottom, you also get this nice outline all the way around. And so that's a good indicator that that is the item that's being focused on. And if you were to click on one of these, you'll notice that as I'm clicking down on my mouse here, it's actually giving me that focus as well. So this may or may not be what you want your specific implementation of this to look like, but you know what the options available to you are. And of course, from here, you can just make it look however you want. So this has been a really simple tutorial on how to create a horizontal nav bar with a hover effect using the pseudo class hover on an anchor tag nested inside of your list items. Thanks a lot for checking in. Can't wait to see you all in the next video. And until next time, peace.